Welcome back and thank you for staying with the Friday Briefing. Part two right now, none other than Willis the Word Master in the highly acclaimed Mind Your Language. Willis, good evening. I hope you've had a fantastic week. <laughs> Yes, just say my week has been great and uh, in fact almost close to what I've just watched on the screen right from the time that you started, you and Ashley, and that is what makes me say you are too of. Let me not even say it. How are you? <laughs> I'm very fine, Willis. I've had a fantastic week. Definitely looking forward to the yes. word on the street this week. It will be mouthful for um, some of the guys who volunteer to do it. So let's just cross over and listen in. Contendinia city, contendinia city, contendinia city. Contemporanea city, contemporanea city, contemporanea city. Contemplo new city. Contemplo new city. Contemplo new city. Contemporanea city. Contemporanea city. Contemporanea city. Contemporanea city. Contemporanea city. Contemporanea city. Contemporaneously, contemporaneously, contemporaneously. Contemporaneously, contemporaneously, contemporaneously. Contemporaneously, contemporaneously, contemporaneously. Contemporaneously, contemporaneously, contemporaneously. Well, um, as we mentioned, it's quite a mouthful word, Willis. I don't want to throw my foot in and try it out, so I'll just pass it over to the experts. How about yes. you tell us how it's done? Now, Jesse, you've correctly described that word. It's a mouthful. That is, it's too long. And, you know, some of these long words are a bit tricky, especially if they're not used in common communication. That is ordinary communication. But what you say for that word is... Contempe, contemporaneously, contemporaneously. Now, when you go just flat on it, you say contemporaneously. Now, remember it refers to a lung disease contracted uh, when somebody inhales very fine silica particles. But now, Jesse, after talking about contemporaneously, tonight there is a word which we handled the other time, and I want our viewers to see it. Very long. It's a very long word, now that you've talked of mouthfuls. And I hope viewers can try. Jesse, this one, since you've had a very, very, you know, huge task for tonight, just leave it to our viewers to try, then I say it for them. Now, this word, Jesse, has 45 letters, and you can remember we handled it the other time, but one person from Kawangware in Nairobi insisted among the other people for this week that Willis kindly repeat it. He claims that his wife, had to bite her tongue while trying to say this word. And this word, dear viewers, you just say pneumono ultra microscopic silicovolcano neosis. Pneumono ultra microscopic silicovolcano neosis. Now, you realize we say volcano or volcano co. Now, very tricky. Jesse, do you want to try it? It's too long, brother. Uh, ah, volcano neosis. <laughs> too long. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> somewhere there. But somewhere just for there. the sake of our viewers, let me now say it on a serious note. You say pneumono ultra microscopic silicovolcano coniosis. The word on the street you say contemporaneously. Now, one thing that you should remember, when words are too big or too long, you can go for the simpler option, just like we have the word silicosis. Instead of talking of pneumono ultra microscopic silicovolcano coniosis, you can just talk about silicosis because both refer to a lung disease contracted when somebody inhales very fine silica particles. Just see any other word. Ah, well, I hope the next words are not that mouthful that I'll be able to pronounce. So let's get right into the collections I of the week. I hope so too. Yes. Now, Willis, the next word is an adjective relating to animal migration. Is it migratory, migratory? How do we pronounce it? Uh, that one, Jesse, has two acceptable or alternative pronunciations. You can say migratory or my gray, gray tree. But remember, you can also say tree. My gray tree or 
migratory. So remember we have those two alternatives for that word. Like you can say migratory season for birds or migratory season for birds. Hi Willis, over to the next word. It relates to the tutor's tu tuition, or is it tuition? I'll have to ask that as well. But the word itself is tutorial, or is it tu tutorial? But as you also tell us about that, let's touch on uh, tuition. Is it tuition or tuition? Because I've had both pronunciations as well. Oh, <laughs> Jesse, you say tuition. Tuition, that is in British English. But remember, the other acceptable pronunciation of that word is tuition. Tuition or tuition. Then when you come to the second one, you say tutorial. Tutorial. But when you listen to the American pronunciation, you'll hear of two at the onset. That is at the beginning. You say two when you are using the American pronunciation. But in RP, that is British pronunciation, which is regarded or considered to be standard, you say tutorial, tutorial, just like online tutorials, or you can say I want to have a tutorial, I mean tutorial with my lecturer. All right, Willis, well noted. Let's go to the next word, uh, meaning to deteriorate after a period of improvement. Relapse or relapse? Oh, now, very tricky, Jesse. That word, you say relapse, you can also say relapse, that is when it functions as a noun. Okay. A relapse or a relapse. But as a verb, you say relapse. All right. Um, I'll, I'll definitely check that later on and try and understand. When it's a noun, you said it's yes. relapse. As a noun, we have two acceptable pronunciations. You can say relapse or relapse. But as a verb, there is only one way that you can pronounce that word, to relapse. You get that? Okay. But there was a relapse or there was a relapse. Do you get the difference? Yes, I do. Finally. Okay. All right, let's, let's go over to the next word. It's a chemical element. Um, might remind some people of the periodic table. Aluminium, aluminium. How do you pronounce it? Oh, you say alu. Aluminium, aluminium. Now, one thing that we should also share with our viewers is the fact that we have another spelling that confuses many people, one which has N-U-M at the end, that ends in N-U-M, that one is American spelling. The one which has N-I-U-M, that is the British spelling, you say aluminium. Remember when you come to the spelling that is American, the pronunciation in both American and British English is alu, aluminum, aluminum. So you don't say aluminum, it's aluminum. I'm talking about the variant spelling that is the American one, but in English, or when we talk about the English uh, uh, spellings, that is the British spelling, we have alu, aluminum. That is the way the word is written in British spelling. All right, well noted, Willis. Over to the next word. I think it's related to that chemical element, aluminium. Um, this time around, it's B-A-U-X-I-T-E. I'll just hand it over to you, Willis, because it oh, seems yes. th th there's a no. catch there, yeah. It, it, there's something a bit tricky, I know, because we have that A and U after B. True. Now, Jesse, A and U in that word, function as a digraph. And when I talk about a digraph technically, I'm talking about a combination of two letters representing one sound. So when you talk of the eighth month in a year, we say August. You'll realize we have A and U at the beginning, and you say August. Now in this word, you also say bauxite. Bauxite. Don't say bauxite. You say bauxite because A and U combine to form the long sound O bauxite okay willis thank you for that clarification now a place yes. where a You're dead welcome. person's body is cremated um is it crematorium or crematorium how do we pronounce it the way you said it for the first time that is crematorium that e takes the sound e don't say crematorium and don't say to cremate 
cremate, no. You say to cremate, to cremate somebody's body. And then we say crematorium. All right, we continue learning, Willis. Thank you for that. Over to the next word, yes. a systematic yes. investigation in order to establish facts and definitely reach a conclusion. Research, it seems straightforward. I hope it is. Oh, just see, that is another tricky one. You remember, I've just talked about the noun and verb form of the word R-E-L-A-P-S-E -E in your questions. Now, I said, as a noun, you say relapse or relapse. But as a verb, you only say relapse. Now, the word that you've just asked about, the word that you brought right now, you say research as a noun. And as a noun, you can also say research. But when you pronounce the verb form, you say research only. You only say research. You get that? Yes, now, I have. Now, research and research can be used as alternatives when you are using that word as a noun. But when it's a verb, when you use it, when it's functioning as a verb in a sentence, you strictly say research, to research on something or to go for a research or a research. That is when I'm talking about the noun form. Are we together? together and I think the next word okay, might need great. a little bit more research um, since it means a paramilitary oh. police <laughs> officer in France so it definitely has a France oh. you know sort of pronunciation the French sort of pronunciation rather yes. uh, G E N D A R M E I just hand this over to you Zandam Gendam how do you pronounce it Tricky, just the way you said it. Now, that word which is borrowed from French, and you know when a word is borrowed from another language to the other, we always call them loan words. This one is a loan word from French, and it's tricky. But when you have these words brought into English, there is the English pronunciation. Sometimes it could be exactly the way it's pronounced in the original language, but there are certain aspects or there are times when you realize that there is a word you pronounce in English this way, but when you get a French speaker, there will be some kind of some slight difference in pronunciation. But the word that you have talked about, which refers to maybe a member of the French uh, police or those who are in the military or the, the armed forces, you say gendarme or gendarme. Gendarme, a gendarme. So G takes the sound, J, then you say J, gendarme. Just like we also say Genre. Don't say genre for G E N R E. Genre, gendarme. Okay. Um, I think it also has a similarity with what you've said, genre as well, like yes. the yes. types of yes. movies. Genre. G genre. genre. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Well, yes. it's well noted. Let's go over to the next word uh, religious rather than secular. Is it sacred or sacred? Oh. Just see, you say, say, don't say sacred. Many people say sacred because of what we see or what the eyes can see. S-A-C-R-E-D. We just find ourselves saying sacred, sacred heart, sacred place. Life is sacred. No, we should avoid sacred. We say sacred, sacred. Just like you would say human life is sacred, not sacred. And with that, we should also remember, Jesse, not to say twilight. Twilight is what we see, but you say twilight, twilight. Okay, well, it's well noted. It's always a pleasure learning yes. these new words. So let's just cross over yes. and uh, get to yes. see what uh, your loyal fans had to ask during the course of this okay. week. <laughs> the loyal fans. In fact, uh, I realized that many people love good or accurate pronunciation of English words. But remember, it's not just about loving the good ones or the accurate ones. It's about pronouncing words well so that you communicate or you deliver the intended message clearly whenever you talk. And especially for those who are in careers of serious communication. We have James Medu of Nakuru. You say moustache, moustache. Don't say mustache, moustache. Then you say conscientious and conscientiously. Then you say niche, but you can, you can also pronounce that word as niche. That is N-I-C-H, 
E. Nish or niche. Then we have Michael Kiprotich of Kiambu. Oh, thank you. Yes, he has talked about the loyal fans of good English pronunciations. You are one of them. Michael Kiprotich of Kiambu and all those who are in Kiambu town, we say thank you very much and keep it always KTN because you will always love it. Now, Masi Awino of Siaya, you say comrade. There are people who find themselves saying comrade. Comrade, very common locally, but we don't have that. The word itself is C O M R A D E. You say comrade, and then you have eulogy, eulogy, not eulogy. In fact, even in writing or in written form, you say or you use E U L O G Y, eulogy, and eulogize. I don't know where eulogy and eulogize came from. But I think sometimes we have what we call now intrusions of sounds when we speak. Now, Edwin Mwangi of Nyeri, you say leopard, not leopard, because that O is silent. Similarly, you say jeopardize, to jeopardize and to put something in jeopardy. Don't say jeopardize and don't say jeopardy. But if you are in you know, local communication or ordinary communication sometimes, Nobody is perfect, but if you can, get it right so that you communicate. Leopard, jeopardize, and jeopardy. Amina Danger of Kilifi, you say devour and sour milk. Wafula Jeffrey of Mumias, you say oust, to oust, O-U-S-T, oust, not oust. You don't oust somebody, you oust. The government of that country was ousted ousted the president of that country or the leader of that party was ousted don't say ousted it happens sometimes in certain countries now say a Sudanese indecisive don't say indecisive indecisive decide decisive and indecisive don't say indecisive the way we find ourselves saying sometimes locally Kachaya Josh and Odek Kodek. Oh, thank you. Loving the program. Keep it up. Karen Chepkwony of Eldoret, you say bizarre. Bizarre incident. Don't say bizarre. Johnson Mayenga, you say quotient, catapult, and amalgamate. Then George Ombwak, you say volunteer to volunteer. Don't say volun. Volunteer, no. Volunteer. Now we have Zach Mayenga, you say scourge. Parliament, not parliament. That I is silent, just like in the word friend. Don't say friend, and don't say parliament. Lia, no, parliament. And then you have, your next word is data, but you can also say data. Both are acceptable pronunciations. You say data or data. And uh, my brother, the fewer the better. Anyway, we have Wilfred Okeo of Nairobi. You say O. Oh, Wilfred Okeo, thank you very much. Lawrence Kilonzo of Kitui also. Keep it up because we have just to give you the best. Because remember, you are watching KTN, always striving to give you just the very best. Keep it up. Now, Marianne Jerry of Nakuru, you say Shaufa. Don't say Chufa. Don't say Chaufa. That driver, the word is from French. You say Shaufa. Then George Omayo of Kisumu City, you say Quams or Quams qualms or qualms now surprise word now we know this word but many people say secatuas secatuas no you say secatas secatas that tool that you use for trimming flowers or whatever you use it for you say secatas don't say secatuas you also say a rapota rapota not rapotua then you also say sabota so that E-U-R letter sequence takes what we call the long mid-central sound R. Uh. Secatas, rapota, and sabota. Then when we come now to confusing words, we have four of them here. The upper one, C-A-U-S-E, you say cause, cause, the cause of that fight. Then we have coerce to coerce somebody into doing something, coerce. So this one is, this one you say, cause, this one is coerce. 
Then we have the last two. They are pronounced the same way. The spellings are different. The meanings are also different, but you pronounce them the same way. Such words are technically called homophones. So this one, you say cause, cause, and you also have this one as cause. They end with the unvoiced sound s. You can see this one is the sound z, but the two have the unvoiced sound s. Cause, 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 then coerce. Now, we have the most talked about words, but tonight I have for you what we call now short forms. There are people who find it sounding unique or stylish when they say less or less, let's go. Let's go, let's go. You know, you may find it sounding unique, but being unique does not mean it's the right way to say something. You say let's, let's go. You pronounce T and then this one also s, let's let's go then the second one also some people find it unique or stylish when they say does does good does good but if you want to get it right just say that's that's you pronounce t and s that's similarly we have what's what you may find it unique or stylish when you say was was happening was it but say what's what good grammar and good pronunciation and also the right choice of words make you communicate very clearly and effectively now when you watch ktn every friday night that is where you have the chance to know how to even use any good dictionary on earth you can also say dictionary and that is when you see the phonetic symbols these symbols are used in those pronunciation guides which are always given in good dictionaries to help you know how to pronounce a word this one, this is the long sound O. That is the symbol for the long sound O. So you say flaw, flaw, flaw. I'm using this one for those who have that rhotic accent where R is pronounced, they would say floor, but please you say flaw, on the floor. So you'll realize this is the phonetic symbol or the sound symbol for the long sound O. Then this one, when we pronounce this word, you say flow. To flow you realize that you have the slight vowel glide o which technically is called technically we call it a diphthong that is a glide involving two vowel sounds diphthong but you can also say diphthong so it is the symbol for o the phonetic transcription or the symbol that is used for you to know it's a vowel glide o so o flow o flow 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 and getting it right is always easy for you especially when you get time to watch friday briefing and the segment itself is mind your language i'm willis ochi and remember you can always interact with me throughout the week when it comes to matters phonetics or phonology and then when we talk just simply about pronunciation otherwise it's now time for me to take you back to nairobi and our tough and hot if you like hot and tough duo that is Jesse Rogers and Ashley Mazuri are there to handle you or to help you. Our viewers, it's always a big salute from Kisumu. All right, and it's a salute right back at you, Willis, the White Master. Have a fantastic weekend and thank you for the continuous lessons. We never cease to live. All right, um, Hakuna Matata. <laughs> oh, wow, you had to. Oh, what? Okay, so he's been practicing to say that all day long. Really?